during that night, there was a typhoon that happened in South Vietnam, the typhoon Dumbri. My biggest concern is the wind effect. There's a speed up effect on the hill versus the flat ground. So at the end of the day, we will do one last round of checks of the coach and the track, traveling very slowly, checking every meter of the track. It was about 11.30, the rain was so heavy. When I say heavy, I was sleeping in my room where water is pouring down from the roof actually. And the phone rang at that time from the operation group people asking for help. I received a call from my supervisor just before midnight saying that the coach was damaged by fallen trays. There was very heavy rain and strong winds and causing the trays to fall and which damaged parts of the coach including the windscreen and the aircon. They decided that it was not safe to continue and they parked the coaches at the middle station and decided to walk down. Part of the reason for deciding to, to stop and walk down was because they heard crackling noise. They were very worried because the crackling sound might mean something serious which can happen. This is very unprecedented. Um, never have such a situation that you know, uh, I would call a calamity sort of. All my lifetime I haven't seen such a, a bad landslide with the trees coming down. People used to say, you're developing. No, it's not from there. For old bungalows and uh, old areas and from the jungle, the land, the earth went down. Nothing to do with development or anything. It's something extraordinary. At about midnight, um, I got a message that our train was hit by three branches. At about 1 a.m., we initiated the uh, emergency response team because we heard there were landslides everywhere. Therefore, the, the Penang Hill, from middle stations, upper stations, all got cut off. By the time they reached the lower station, it was already 2.30 in the morning, and we had a debriefing to find out actually what happened. After they have walked down from middle station, the landslide started. Fallen trays, big boulders, size of a compact car. We are fortunate there was no injuries, no incidents. When I went out, I saw the trees uh, as if a uh, typhoon hit the place. The guest house, the whole slope has gone down until uh, two roads down below. From our guest house, the earth came down to upper tunnel station. Okay, it's all on the bridge and part of the railings on the bridge is gone. And uh, we can't walk through here to go to the other side. So many boulders has fallen down there. Every road, every bypasses were covered with earth and trees. So many lamp poles has came down, cables stuck in, inside the mud, inside the earth, and some places have no electricity. And I can see some water pipes burst, and you know no way to stop them because they are four inches pipes. And I was told that the hotel, tourists were stuck there. So there were children, old people, elderly people, and uh, these people were stuck there. And there are some bungalows, they don't want to leave the bungalow. My immediate task is to inform CM, text him the situations on the Penang Hill, and initiate the emergency response so that we can execute our immediate task systematically. Chief Minister has, uh, right from day one itself, has given us a lot of uh, encouragement and also empowerment okay, to execute the recovery plan. The first thing that we did uh, was to record down all the landslides location. We have created a very vast database. Some of the boulders were big, size of compact cars. There was many times we estimated probably about 300 tons of soil came down along with a lot of fallen trees and all that. We were only able to assess the real damage after the tons of soil was removed and all, the, all that. See? The boulders we couldn't remove, we had to get the contractors to hack it.
that was the time when we have to start the restoration work, starting with clearing of the track. You, you couldn't move heavy machinery up. You can only use the traditional way, which is by hand tools. Back holes, spades, wheelbarrows to remove the soil, one bucket at a time. No more water, food is running down, we don't have food, we need help from outsiders and because it's a, it's a risky situation, we can't handle it by ourselves. So they decided to bring the helicopter and the rescue mission started. PAC got the food from the DAP and some volunteers has given the dry food stuff and we took to the PAC. What gives me the strength is the, the teamwork. Uh, right from day one itself, when I initiated the emergency response, although people lack of sleep, they're all highly stressed, but they continue to work very hard. So, and many of them work uh, seven days a week. So everybody is moving in the same direction, that's the key thing. The funicular system is designed and supplied by the uh, Europeans. A lot of the parts and all that are specially ordered overseas. This takes time. PSC is committed to bring the furniture services back to normal operation as quickly as possible so that we can bring back the shine and the glory to Penang Hill again. It was a, a nice uh, uh, thing happened in Penang Hill where all joined together. No race, no religion, uh, no countries. I should say no Bangla, no Indonesian. Everyone joining and cleared the path of the track. And even the GM joined, uh, Dato Sri uh, Lee Kai Chung joined. Everyone joined in. Everyone were working there very hard. And uh, nobody showed uh, any tiredness until we clear that uh, train. I, I cannot say thanks to them. I have to hug them. <laughs> the landscape may have changed at Penangil, but the spirit is still there. It's been a challenging time for everyone since this incident happened. Penangil Corporation is committed to bring the shine and glory back to Penangil. <laughs>